Okay, so if you follow this link, uh, you'll be able to download a relatively recent, so it's a 2018 um, release of what the VIX index constitutes. And the VIX index is a volatility index. It might be regarded as really an implied volatility index that's pulled off of a fairly liquid S&P uh, 500 options, right? So the implied volatility can be pulled out of S&P 500 options to trade on the uh, SIBO, okay, on the SIBO, okay? And in here, there's a methodology um, relating to how to estimate the VIX. And I'm going to go through this with some actual figures and try to replicate the results set out in the methodology. Um, and this methodology was also, so this is 2018, I went back and I had in one of my folders here, just that same um, methodology, and this was released in 2014. So it looks like what currently is in use is the same as what was there in 2014 as well, and the same figures are used for explanations. An interesting thing here is the, the VIX or the implied volatility is something that's kind of uh, caught on as a, f a measure of fear in the market. And it's, uh, it's not uncommon to hear, uh, you know, in uh, news clips uh, that the VIX index rose or the VIX index uh, fell on any given day. Um, and um, this is sometimes given as part of the business news so it, it's kind of captured the public imagination it's also significant in terms of the amount of trading that's going on and we'll take a little look at that in a moment and um, another place where we might get a sense of um if you go to fred federal reserve of st louis uh, and their fred database probably i should have started with fred uh, volatility and they say volatility indices and if we take a look at different measures of um, implied volatility well this is the standard one this is the VIX and the, the FRED database now is compiling these as well or it's uh, releasing these uh, volatility indices and um, you can see that the in if we go back how far can we go back here? Maximum. And this brings us back to 1990. And one of the things we observe here during period of um, market tension when S&P was, S&P 500 was falling value, the implied volatility associated with options trading on the S&P 500 on the CBOE, that implied volatility tends to go up. And part of the explanation here is uh, the S&P 500 options are like insurance against movements in the value of the S&P. And um, when the S&P goes down, you get this uh, increase in magnitude of trading. And probably recently with the fall off in terms of uh, the Apple and other um large stocks some of the tech stocks we're we're finding that the s and the volatility index is uh, the vix is rising as well um if we go back to uh volatility indices okay so there's a number of volatility indices in fact released by the federal reserve uh there's more than one and uh, we have the cboe equity vix uh on Apple, let's take a look at that. So that's the same as VIX index, except we're pulling the implied volatility just from the Apple stock uh, uniquely. And again, if we look, this is just going back to 2014. We probably the maximum here is a shorter time frame, only goes back here to I think 2010 uh, during. You know, in the most recent period when the uh, Apple stock was falling, Apple has been falling fairly significantly. 
in late 2018, early 2019, and you can see that the implied volatility is begin beginning to go up. And um, again, there's quite a few indices there. There's one Goldman Sachs, one on IBM. And uh, if we go to, if we look in the, in the white paper here released by this SIBO, uh, we find that they have quite a few of these, right? So let's just take a quick look at where they might be. And uh, not on this one. Okay, try the other one. Right, and this one here, I think we saw it a moment, a moment ago, with these uh, implied volatility indices that are obtained from um, the, uh, sectoral uh, uh, indices. So on US energy, on emerging markets, on ETFs, on gold, silver, on specific stocks like Apple, Amazon, Goldman Sachs, Google. And I know as well there's a, a, a VIX equivalent that trades on the back of uh, treasury bills, right? So these are all relevant uh, for hedging, also relevant in terms of providing information. Now, how do we go about running an estimation here in terms of the VIX? And can we follow the uh, steps outlined in terms of the estimation. Now, in the or original type of estimation that was made, if we look at Whaley's uh, contribution here, um, he points out that, that there are two periods, right? Um, so the original VIX calculation was made with regard to the S&P 100, not the S&P 500. And the, the VIX originally was defined in terms of Black Shoals. So in the original, it was Black Shoals implied volatility uh, calculated at the at the money uh, option for the S and P one hundred, and then subsequently um, the, the VIX was updated. So the methodology in two thousand three was changed where the VIX uh, was then going to use the S&P 500 with a wider range of um, um, moneyness, uh, not only at the money options, and it would, would also use model-free implied volatility rather than what had been previously used, the Black Shoals implied volatility. So that was a significant change in terms of met the methodology. The methodology is uh, identified here, um, and we might run through. Um, let's just take a look. And the idea here is that we, okay, so we take, um, we're working with, first of all, we're working with the S&P 500. Uh, the um, maturity on those, the expiration on the S&P 500 can be weekly and then the third Friday of the month. Okay, so just to be, um, I think, monthly. Uh, and then as the market grew in terms of liquidity and trading, these contracts became weekly. And when we work out the implied volatility for the, the, the 30 days, the idea is we have a near uh, expiry and then the next expiry, which revolves around that 30 day window. Okay, so uh, step by step. So the stock index, such as the S&P 500, are calculated using prices of their component stocks. Each index uh, rules that govern the selection of the components, securities, and a form to calculate the index values. The VIX index is a volatility index comprised of options rather than stocks. Okay. So that's what we've been saying. So it's based on, if we go back to Whaley for just one second, uh, it's probably useful to try to discern the difference between the two. This is the, if you like, the VIX. So the, the red here, red denotes the VIX. And we can see here, uh, this has been extended back here to 1986. In the 1987 crash, the VIX uh, went stratospheric. Right, uh, up to um, probably close to 90, definitely higher than 80. 
and then in our most recent crisis where and again 1987 looks very small here but that was a very substantial drop in the value of the um s p 500 and with that came this fairly dramatic increase in uh, the implied volatility uh, associated with that drop in the s p 500 and then we can see periods when the uh, market fell yeah there was um some consternation here in terms of vix it was uh, relatively elevated and um, and when we stretch out to so that would have been around the 2000 period um when we look at the most recent uh, financial crisis starting in august 2007 right there was a fall here we don't we haven't fully captured the s and p 500s drop but the vix the red denoted by the red here the vix uh, again got stratospheric so periods of significant fall off in the value of the s p 500 are associated with elevated levels of implied volatility and in that sense this index represents a reasonable hedge okay so getting back then to the um methodology uh Okay, so th this is the formula that we're going to use, and there is a, again, we've got, what we've got to note here is that there are going to be two sets of, there's a, a, a battery of options, um, and option prices that we're going to use, both for calls and puts, and there is a near expiry, and then there's the next expiry, uh, for those battery or series of options that we're going to look at, uh, given that the the time period involved to maturity of those respective expiry dates is relatively relatively close we tend to use the estimate the time to maturity in terms of minutes so the t here that is given in the formula it's expressed in terms of minutes at least initially okay okay so let's take into consideration here what this t1 and t2 actually mean how do we express them in terms of minutes where are these numbers coming from and um how do we get this 0 0.06 for the near expiry and then for the next expiry okay so we might set it up in excel and uh okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna take a little snapshot here if i can might just take this out and set out the numbers in Excel just to get the ball rolling. Okay, so I'm going to open up a Excel spreadsheet. Fix. Let's see where do I have that? I think it's this one. Okay, so I'll just paste in. Paste that in, and I want to just for purposes of understanding the timing involved here, figure out estimate. Um, the the time involved okay so for it's we we take it that the current uh time so that when we're making the estimation it's it's right now nine o'clock nine forty six nine forty six uh so that would mean that um we are ten hours have passed and we're and fourteen minutes or less fourteen minutes okay so in a sense then that would imply that there are 14 hours still remaining the day and 14 hours 14 multiplied by 60 minutes 60 minutes is equal to 840 plus 14 because 946 is shy of 10 a.m 946 a.m is 14 minutes less shy of 10 a.m so there's 14 minutes if we add those two the 8 uh, 40 plus the 14 that should give us this 854 so there's eight 854 minutes to pass from 9 46 until 12 o'clock that night or until 24 hours that same day Okay, so I'll finish this estimation in the next video.